Among the documentary filmmakers at the New York Film Festival were Frank Caraldron and Alison Berg, who co-directed The Dog. As they travelled downtown to celebrate after their film's premiere, New York of 2013 came into view. Their documentary looks back to New York of 40 years ago. It tells of a man who called himself the dog who botched a bank robbery. He was later famously portrayed by Al Pacino in the 1975 classic Dog Day Afternoon. The dog carried out the robbery ostensibly to pay for his boyfriend's sex change operation. The film is an exploration of him and the times. And I feel like we kind of came across somebody that we're never going to really find somebody to film that is outspoken, as outrageous, as sexually free in a time when you really couldn't be. There's sex and there's love. I'm a lover. One of the challenges for Frank Caraldron and Alison Berg is that their subject isn't always that likable. He had a lot of attitude, he had a lot of swagger, and, and he was a little bit creepy. Um, he had a dark side and a good side. I mean, there was something very engaging about him, and he touched upon a lot of uh, interesting events in American history just completely by accident. A man doesn't regret what he does. The Dog is just one of several documentaries in the New York Film Festival lineup. The programmers have put together quite an eclectic mix. Some of the non-fiction films being shown here have been shot quite conventionally, while others take on an exotic, almost experimental form. Manica Mana is an experimental film that is simple but original. The directors placed a film camera fixed in one position inside a cable car travelling up to a temple in Nepal. The camera never stops until the film runs out. You just watch a selection of travellers. A lot of people found it very enthralling. For those who are open to the experience, I think it's a novel, perhaps a novel way for them to engage with people without having to know narrative stories about who they are, where they came from, to just be in the space with them. I think there's a mystery wrapped around each individual trip and why they're going, so I think that's what pulls people along, shot from shot. We wanted to emphasize the, the sensory experience, not the intellectual experience or the, the, the verbal experience of the trip. We wanted people watching the film to feel like they were really in this cable car as much as we could. Perhaps the most topical documentary at the New York Film Festival has been The Square, put together by an Egyptian-American filmmaker who, in 2011, began following specific activist individuals caught up in Egypt's unrest. Tahrir Square looms large in this comprehensive film, which is described as an immersive experience. The film follows three main characters um, from different parts of society, from different religious backgrounds, Muslim Brotherhood, secular, and follows the very emotional story, human story, of the past two and a half years as they have fought to bring down one dictator to the point where they have brought down the next dictator. Does the film have a point of view? Is it politically neutral? That's a million dollars. You've got to see the film to tell me whether it's political. I mean, look. Many people who have watched it, and this is my goal, my goal is to be able to take it back to Egypt and to have people in the Muslim Brotherhood see it, to have people who are secular see it, to have people in the army see it, and to feel like it's a fair portrayal of what's happening. Some of the documentaries shown at the New York Film Festival will have to struggle to get distribution deals, but at least the festival goers demonstrated significant enthusiasm, with many non-fiction films pulling in very big crowds for documentaries that were nearly all quite clearly passion projects.